Potawatomi, arts, culture, and entertainment. This is a Peace Production. I give it over to Kathy Fiskis. Put your hands together. Well, I was going to thank Adam for a lovely introduction, but I <laughs> you might just change that. But you know, when I was a kid, I lived on Fairmont Avenue, and I discovered that I could not make mud pies in the backyard. The fr front yard was great. The backyard, it didn't work. And I didn't know then what I know now. And that is, my backyard was Luss. The pioneers called Luss sugar clay. You could get a whole handful of Luss and then get it wet, and it would just go through your hands like sugar. So tonight, we're going to discuss the Luss Hills National Scenic Byway. We'll discuss how the hills were formed, what was underground, who lived here, what lived here, and a little bit about seasons. So I want you to grab your imagination and go with me two and a half million years ago. The discussion of how the Lust Hills were formed begins with ice. As glaciers melted and moved, the Missouri River Valley was filled with water and sediment released by the melting ice because the glaciers actually ground up rock. This painting shows the grooves in the rock that could only have been made by a glacier. About 100 years ago, archaeologist White discovered glacial scratches in Mills County at the Stout Quarry about five miles south of Pacific Junction. This is an old archaeological photo of what those grooves would look like. So where can you see this now? Well, you can't see it anymore. <laughs> but this is a recent photo of that area. I tried really hard to, to get in the right place. You can clearly see the Missouri River Valley floodplain. Now just imagine the Missouri River flowing white. Muddy Mo was flowing white with so much sediment in it. As the glaciers left the area, the melt water decreased and then the winds came. This painting shows wind with sediment in it. You usually see wind, the paintings with the leaves blowing, the trees bending. I wanted to paint wind with stuff in it. These sediment-heavy westerly winds dropped tiny particles of wind-blown silt, according to the US Geological Survey, known as Luss. In other words, our Luss Hills are dunes. Our Luss Hills are so deep, so high, so odd, that the seven counties on the western edge of Iowa have been designated as the Luss Hills National Scenic Byway. A national byway right here. This narrow band of hills exists north of Sioux City to the Iowa-Missouri border. You've seen these identifying road signs. Well, then the rains came, and this painting depicts that rain filtered through the ground, making hard deposits composed of lime as rounded or elongated shapes per archaeologist Gene C. Pryor. As rain continued, lime became really concentrated into limestone. Now, lime is an element in plaster that was once so popular in homes as plaster and lath walls and for decorative moldings. If you bake limestone at 1,500 degrees, you end up with pure lime. This photo shows a street sign outside a crescent 
identifies the location of a lime kiln, Lime Kiln Road. We'll turn to other aspects of what's underground. This painting shows layers in the ground. You have bedrock, then shale, then limestone, then luss. The luss in this area is brown, yellowish brown, and gray with dark brown iron stains. Archaeologist Schimmel discovered luss can be dense or porous or light yellow. And I can tell you, my backyard on Fairmont Avenue was very light yellow. So, where can you see this? Here's a photo on East Pierce behind the former Max I. Walker building. You can clearly see the various layers. Notice it's also a vertical cut in the hill. Here's a great photo of a vertical cut on Logan Street behind CHI Mercy. A vertical cut is required due to luss eroding easily. Now here's another photo of a vertical cut on Canesville across from Primrose. If the luss is not on a vertical cut and if it gets wet, it turns into a consistency like toothpaste or soup. Well, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one in Council Bluffs that have seen stuff like this and you say, oh, that's terrible. They should landscape better. I don't know why they do that, <laughs> right? Other people were smarter than me, thank goodness. Now this painting shows bedrock in Plymouth County in the Big Sioux Valley area. According to Iowa History Special Projects in Northwest Iowa, this quartzite is hard vitreous rock from pink to red with rounded quartz sand grains. Between bedrock and luss is what they call glacial drift. This painting shows how prairie plants need and can adapt to extremes of heat and cold weather and the effects of sun and wind and prairie fires. It's just grass. How can it come back year after year? The reason is native plants and flowers are 60% roots underground as researched by the Iowa Association of Naturalists. Hitchcock Nature Center has display cases in their lodge that have examples of various grasses. Some of them are very tall. And here's a photo of me at Waubonsee State Park. On a good day, I'm five foot three, and I can't even reach the top of that grass. So you can imagine the depth of those roots. Now we turn to who lived in the Los Hills. This painting is based on records in Fremont County Historical Society. A Folsom Point, something that you might regard as a spear point, was found west of Sydney indicating a human presence in Fremont County 13,000 years ago. Now, a Folsom Point is about three and a half inches long and is chipped out of a special rock. Archaeologists have tried to do that themselves with a harder rock, and they found out that is not an easy thing to do. It's a, it's a real skill. This painting is of a Paleo-Indian who was a nomadic hunter of bison and other large animals in the Lus Hills about 11,000 BC, according to William Blackburn. These Paleo-Indians used fluted projectile points often found on hilltops. So this painting depicts a, a hunter surveying the bison in the valley below, and I think he just got careless and dropped a few of those spear points. <laughs> This painting also shows that some archaeologists believe that early humans added roots and grains and berries to their diet of protein. What you don't necessarily see right away is there's another creature 
in the brush that's saying, wait a minute, I thought that lunch was mine. Yeah. Now here's a photo of that area with the rolling hillsides in, in Wabonsi State Park. It shows the basic terrain. This painting imagines a human near Sioux City. According to the Office of the State Archaeologist, a Clovis point, which is chipped out of a different kind of rock, was discovered in Woodbury County to be about 10,000 years old. Stone projectile points, whether it's Clovis or Folsom, were used as weapons and cutting tools by early humans. This painting is of Monona County between Turin and Moorhead. In, uh, it's north of Harrison County. In 1955, a gravel pit operator, Asa Johnson, discovered ancient human remains near Turin, Iowa. Tests proved that the skeletons were 5,000 to 6,000 years old. This painting also shows an unusual wind-blown deposit under the lust that was discovered to be volcanic ash from extinct volcanoes near Yellowstone Park, according to Gene C. Pryor in Landforms of Iowa. This painting also represents Preparation Canyon that was big in Mormon history. Now this painting represents transition from Paleo-Indian to archaic to woodland area. According to Tim Weitzel, historic preservation specialist, the archaic peoples lived from 8,500 BC to about 1,000 BC. And they were still nomadic hunters, but they began to make greater use of semi-permanent camps. Troy Stolp, in his recent talk here at Pace, spoke about the significant remains of archaic peoples that were discovered when the now Titan Hill in Lewis Central School System was built. That was a big deal in the late 70s. Then Woodland Indians, 1000 BC to 1250 AD, were living in small villages of lodge home sites. Many were discovered in the Glenwood area. So where can you see these now? Well, here's a photo of Mills County Historical Museum painting. It's an imaginative painting of a village by Alice Rowe Bell. Also in the museum, Glenwood has a replica of such a lodge home. The Mills County area and the Lewis Central School <laughs> District area are well known to archeologists. This painting imagines an area near Missouri Valley, and it depicts weather and deep valleys that shut off winter winds, providing ideal community living conditions, as stated in the documents of the State Historical Society. And here's a photo of the high ridges and deep valleys of Murray Hill in Harrison County, just outside of Missouri Valley. Davis Grathwell in The Land of the Fragile Giants documents that pottery of the Glenwood culture was particularly distinctive. I think it's very imaginative. These people were very creative. This painting is my impression of the markings on pottery shards that were found in Mills County. Where can you see this today? Well, the Mills County Historical Museum has a large collection of pottery examples from various eras. So now let's turn to the early animals of the Los Hills. This painting illustrates prehistory underwater life. Archaeologist Shemek documented fossils of ancient mussels, valve snails, and snails. Much of Iowa was covered by a freshwater inland sea. This photo is of harvested limestone in Mills County. Limestone is a rock of calcium carbonate, often composed of tiny shell fragments and other debris that's been
compacted by pressure. I remember I was driving back from Kansas City one day and there's a red Corvette in front of me and it suddenly spun out. It was by St. Joe and that's about where the interstate, Interstate 29, is almost pinched on both sides with these huge outcrops of limestone. And that Corvette spun around and slammed into the limestone that looked like that. Oh, and I, I called 911. Yeah. You, you did. <laughs> now, here's a creature for you. This painting depicts a diversified environment as described by Rhodes and Simpkin Jr. of the University of Iowa. Woodlands, stream, stream edge, grassland. Here you see one forest species, and that's the white footed mouse. In addition to small animals, this painting shows my impression of the mastodon, Equus calibus, that's an early horse, and the giant sloth, as described by Schimmick in Geology of Harrison and Monona counties. Now, evidence of Ice Age animals like woolly mammoth, camel, and giant beaver have been found in the Les Hills landforms from early history as well. And then there were birds. Fossils show ospreys have roamed the earth for 13 million years. The Iowa DNR reports tribal elders of the Omaha nation include ospreys nesting along waterways as part of their oral traditional stories. This painting depicts an ancient osprey plucking fish for food. Now, notice, Hitchcock Nature Center tracks about 13,000 different bird species annually, and that includes ospreys. Well, our last topic tonight is seasons. In Plymouth County, north of Sioux City, the Broken Kettle Grassland is a 4,500-acre prairie preserve. This painting shows the ancient Lus Hills were rounded and soft, not eroded and jagged like the description that Mary Swandler in The Land of the Fragile Giants describes, like crinkled pie crust. Isn't that cool? Hills like crinkled pie crust. They just... Anyway, this preserve is home to the endangered Iowa rattlesnake and the ten-petal blazing star. The Lus Hills today explode with native wildflowers in the spring. Please, drive the byway in the spring. Landforms of Iowa, Gene C. Pryor documents unusual native plants and animals like the spine leaf yucca and the spade foot toad, as seen in this summer painting. Two species more typical of desert environments further southwest. And, yep. You can see this closer to home. I took this picture last summer just off Interstate 29 South by the Bungie and Google plants at Folsom Point. This painting is autumn color. The burr oak is native to Iowa. According to the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach, the thick cork-like bark was and is so thick it protects the oak from prairie fires. The Lus Hills reveal specialized ecological niches favorable for the growth of trees and shrubs. And you'll recognize this season, it's winter. <laughs> Iowa was involved in a general climate change buried under frequent layers of snow and ice, according to the publication, The Annals of Iowa. After the glaciers, many centuries of precipitation as snow followed, starting about 22,000 years ago. This area experienced cool short summers with 
less than four months above 50 degrees. Well, I'll conclude with a story of when I worked at KETV, Hearst Television. One of my vice presidents had his offices in Manhattan. And on occasion, he got invited to the Hearst suite at Yankee Stadium. And he would take his son. And, but one day, he decided he would just take his kid to a ball game. And the kid said, how come we're parking here? Well, how come we're sitting outside? Where's the free taco bar and hot dog? It was at that moment that my vice president realized he'd been treating his son to something really special. But the kid didn't know that. That's us. We live in the Lost Hills. We drive by the Lost Hills. We work in the Lost Hills. We see them every day. And they're very special. It's a national byway. It's very fragile. We don't think anything of it. Well, I'll hang around for a bit. Um, just know, you can ask me any question, but I'm not a park ranger. I'm not a naturalist. I'm, a, I'm an artist. So I, I see some of you already picked up some of the brochures that I brought in. And please pay attention to those people that, whose job it really is to, to promote the Lus Hills. But I just wanted to thank well, I wanted to thank you for the gift of your attention. And of course, I want to thank Pace, um, Dana, Adam, Annabelle. They've been very helpful. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I wanted to thank Golden Hills RC&D, Potawatomi Conservation, um, Council Bluffs Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Mills County Historical Museum, Harrison County Historical Museum, and the Council Bluffs Library Resources, and to my family and friends who have helped me throughout this project and for their extra support tonight. So please, grab another beverage, <laughs> look, look, look at the paintings, and then maybe you might want to take some original art home. So it's been an honor. Thank you very much.